Hi and welcome to the Philosopher's Games. With the last Dark Souls 3 DLC and a complete edition on the horizon, I thought about making an in-depth beginner's guide for Dark Souls 3. While I focus on Dark Souls 3, I will also mention the other Souls games including Bloodborne. So it's basically a beginner's guide for all Souls games. Dark Souls is a quite difficult game, but parts of its difficulty are tied to a lack of knowledge of the player. With just a few hints Souls games become a bit easier. I would still recommend to figure it out alone for the full experience, but if you reach a frustration level fast or feel that running your head repeatedly against a wall is not fun or wasting your time, maybe I can help you a bit. Oh, and I also try to keep it spoiler free. Number 1. Make Dark Souls fun for you. It's most important that you play Dark Souls the way you want and you think it's fun for you. There is no right way and min-maxing shouldn't concern you too much. Only if you plan on diving very deep into PvP. Just play a weapon or weapons you like and that fit your playstyle. You can complete the game without leveling your character at all, not wearing armor, only using a bow, never changing your starter weapon or however you want. But keep in mind that some decisions have consequences on the difficulty of the game. Challenge runs are a big thing in Dark Souls and the game has no difficulty settings, but you can make your life harder or easier by some decisions or rules you can set for your playthrough. And this leads well into my next point. Number 2. Starting Class Souls games always offer several starting classes. Some of them make the start easier, others harder. The class that is probably the strongest for the start in Dark Souls 3 would be the Knight or maybe the Warrior. The most difficult is probably the Sorcerer, so I would recommend the Knight for a smooth start. In Dark Souls 2 the best starter class is probably the Knight or maybe the Cleric. In Dark Souls 1 it's really hard to say. Roria, maybe Knight or even Pyromancer. In Bloodborne maybe the Violent Past or the Milk Toast. And in Demon Souls I guess the Royal makes the start quite easy. Number 3. Information as mentioned, a lot of Souls difficulty comes from a lack of knowledge. For example, you see this overwhelming stat screen and have no clue what all those stats do. Or just the attributes. What exactly do they do? Well, you can press a button for the gesture menu in the menu. And then the game shows you a small information on every stat. That is very useful and a lot of players miss that. By the way, in Dark Souls 3 you can also hide half of the menu by pressing the button for the camera lock-on. Another element that is connected to information is, if you find a new item and have no clue what it does, always go into your inventory menu and check its description. This is really important. If you are stuck at some point, maybe think about items you picked up before or check your inventory and read through some descriptions. This can help a lot. Number 4. Stamina. As explained in my A Closer Look at Stamina video, which I would really recommend watching, stamina in Dark Souls is very important. It is pretty much an element that determines the number of your options. Full stamina means all options and no stamina pretty much no options. With this, this bar is often even more important than your health. Every move costs stamina except for walking, changing your direction or using some items in some souls games. Always have at least a little bit of stamina left so you have the option to roll away. This is very important and called stamina management. Also, if you or an enemy blocks without enough stamina, you or he gets staggered and at least in Dark Souls 3 it's then possible to do a special attack that deals a lot of damage. This special attack is not present in Dark Souls 1 and in Dark Souls 2 it's again a bit different. There you have a guard break move instead that replaced the kick. If an enemy blocks a guard break you can do a special attack independent of the enemy's stamina. Number 5. Rolling. Rolls in Dark Souls and especially in Dark Souls 3 are very very strong. Ok, they nerfed the roll in Dark Souls 2 but even there it was strong at some point. 
What you have to understand is that a role gives you so-called iframes, invulnerability or invincibility frames. Iframes are frames or so to say a small portion of time during the role animation where the player is invulnerable and can take any damage even if an attack goes right through his hitbox. Dark Souls is carefully designed around this idea so this is intended. What that means is you don't roll to dodge out of the way and avoid getting hit even though you can still do it but you roll to negate damage. If you time your roll correctly as mentioned you don't get damage even if you get hit. This allows a very aggressive playstyle because you can roll into an enemy attack and directly hit him as soon as you get up because it's quite possible that your enemy is still in the last bits of his attack animation the so called recovery frames or recovery animation and can't do anything about it or punish you if you don't attack for too long. And this explains why rolls are so strong in Dark Souls. Number 6. Hit Stun and Stagger. I usually use these terms loosely and interchangeably because they are very similar. If you hit an enemy you can stagger or hit stun him. So if you hit faster you can for example cancel your enemy out of his attack with this. How this is exactly determined is a bit different from Souls game to Souls game and a bit complicated but usually it has to do with the poise stat. This is also more a PvP topic which I don't want to cover here and I won't go too deep into it. As a rule of thumb the bigger your weapon the more likely is it to hit stun your enemy on a successful hit that is not blocked. The heavier the armor of an enemy the harder it is to hit stun him. In addition all or most bosses are usually harder to hit stun. So if you see an enemy and he wears heavy armor consider that your hit stun is probably not that reliable. But it is very strong and with the time you find out against what enemies hit stun works best. In Dark Souls 3 also hit stunning against humanoid enemies is usually a bit easier. Just to mention it in Dark Souls 3 there is a concept of hyper armor. That means during a specific time of specific frames of a specific attack it gets harder to be hit stunned. So you can start this attack take the hit of your enemy during the animation and your attack will not be cancelled. This concept is called hyper armor and can be or is very important for PvP. I will link some information about it down in the description. If we look at the term stagger Bloodborne introduced a mechanic to the soul series that if you hit a boss enemy enough times he will stagger at some point and sometimes allowing you to perform a special attack that deals a lot of damage. That is also the case in Dark Souls 3 but not in 2 or 1. Number 7 Souls and leveling. Souls in Dark Souls are a hybrid currency that combines experience and gold. You need them to level up, buy stuff and upgrade your equipment. If you die you drop the souls you haven't spent at the place where you died or were 5 seconds before you died. If you go there and collect them you get them back. If you die on the way they are gone forever and you drop your current amount of souls again. Losing your souls will happen to you at some you point. Fool you no longer. You lose your souls. All of them. Over and over again. And it can be frustrating, but there is a simple trick to prevent this from happening with high amounts of souls. Spend them. Level up or go buying stuff after every boss fight. Don't run around with thousands of souls exploring unknown areas that is not smart. Also leveling up gives you attribute points and that makes your character stronger and with that the game becomes easier. Also it's important to level up your weapons. We talk about them in a moment. 
In Dark Souls 3, Vigor is a very important stat because it gives you health and health is very strong in that game. But Endurance and your main damage stat are also very important. So you should focus on Vigor or health, damage and Endurance for more stamina and find a balance between them. In Dark Souls 1, Endurance was by the way a very strong stat because it not only influenced stamina but also your max equip load. In Dark Souls 2 you also have this unique stat called Adaptability, which influences the iframes of your role, so it's there very important too. Keep in mind that attributes have soft caps and leveling the stat further will get you diminishing returns for your soul investment. In Dark Souls 3 it's often around 40, in Dark Souls 1 and 2 it was around 50 for some stats. Number 8. Weapons and Armor First, keep in mind that you can complete the game basically with any weapon. There are of course very strong builds with certain weapons, but you can play whatever weapon you like. There is no right or wrong weapon. You only have to understand what your weapon is good for. As mentioned, leveling your weapon is as or even more important as leveling your character. Leveling up a weapon does not increase its requirements. You only need to fulfill the base requirements and you can use it no matter if it is plus 1 or plus 10. Leveling up needs some souls and materials, the titanites. In Dark Souls 2 you get those quite easy and in big amounts. In Dark Souls 1 only the highest material is very limited, even though you can farm every material at some point in Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 3 is more restrictive in that regard because you get access to materials through progression. And it is not as free as Dark Souls 1 or Dark Souls 2 when it comes to where you are allowed to go and where not. But at some point it gives you access to enough materials so that you can easily max out at least 2 if not 3 weapons. Just keep in mind that weapon progression is quite slow in Dark Souls 3. But generally for all Souls games I recommend to choose a weapon you want to play and stick with it for some time until you have enough materials to level up another. And when it comes to deciding on what you spend titanite chunks and slaps on, you choose one weapon and maybe after that a second one. In this regard it is also important to check your weapon's attribute scaling. D is the lowest, A the second best and S is the highest. Possible attributes for scaling are Strength, Dexterity, Faith and Intelligence. Some weapons scale with multiple attributes. Also in Dark Souls 3 there is one weapon that has a different scaling, but I won't tell you more about it. There's also the option to imbue your weapons with some materials and give it some effect or alter its stats. This is a bit different and more complicated in Dark Souls 1 but got streamlined in Dark Souls 2 and this system was pretty much kept for 3. Only expanded a bit. From my perspective this is very optional. It can help but if you don't understand it and choose an effect that does not synergize well with your build, you can end up dealing far less damage. While upgrading the level of your weapon is always better. Imbuing can weaken your weapon but of course if you choose wisely you can benefit from it too. Keep in mind that for some builds a not imbued weapon can also be the best choice. So think about imbuing your weapon carefully. Armor can also be important even though you can play through the game without wearing armor at all. In Dark Souls 3 you can't upgrade armor but in previous games you could. But was a thing that you upgraded pretty much last as a bonus or for PvP to reach certain thresholds for some stats. If you use a shield, upgrade that before your armor. It can make a bigger difference. In Dark Souls 3 it is also important that if you want to benefit from armor efficiently and not wear it because of fashion souls, then put something in all your 4 armor slots. It matters not so much what you're wearing as long as you wear 4 pieces of armor because every piece gives you a big flat bonus and only a small bonus amount depending on how protective or heavy the armor is. 
Also, when you are good at using your role, armor becomes pretty much unnecessary and is only for fashion and min-maxing in PvP. But for beginners, armor makes things a bit easier. But watch out that your equip load is under 70% in Dark Souls 2 and 3 or under 50% in Dark Souls 1. Else you fat roll and lose most of your iframes. This is something you should usually avoid. Number 9. Buffing and using items. Damage output is often tied to how easy enemies will be for you. To maximize your damage, you can for example buff your weapons temporarily. You can do this with some magic spells or by using items. In Dark Souls 1, the lightning weapon buff item is quite limited, but in 2, 3 and Bloodborne you can at some point buy them indefinitely. So if you have the souls and fighting a boss, feel free to buff your weapon. But keep in mind, some bosses have resistances against some elements like lightning or fire. So you can reduce your damage output if you choose a buff a boss is resistant against. In Dark Souls 1 only few bosses had lightning resistances and that's why the lightning buff is so strong and popular in Dark Souls 1. In 2 they mixed it up a bit more. Note that you can't buff all weapons. In Dark Souls 1 it was very strict. You could only buff the normal weapons. In 2 and 3 it's less restrictive. But also in those games weapons exist you can't buff. Even though there's a bug present in all Souls games called tumble buffing allows to circumvent this and is sometimes used in speedruns or for some challenge runs. In addition, there are many useful items that you can use in combat. Don't be afraid to use them. Only few items are really rare. Throwing knives or firebombs are not amongst them. Number 10. Patterns and bosses. This tip, if you fully understand it, is key to beat almost every boss, especially the difficult ones in Souls. Of course, there are a few exceptions. I would almost consider this a spoiler, so maybe skip it if you don't want to know it, even though it's a very general hint. This game is about attack patterns, recognizing them and reacting to them with foresight. All you need to do is balance out your recognition of attacks, positioning, defense and offense. For the offense part you can say against fast attacking bosses be patient and if you find an attack window attack only once or maybe twice with a very fast weapon. Don't get greedy, be patient. And this is really hard to learn and takes discipline. It's easy said but this is the number one reason why players die in boss fights. Recognizing is very iterative. At some point you just know an attack when the animation of it starts because you have seen it so many times. And most attacks have some minor details to them, so you can recognize and differentiate them. The animation work in Souls is really well done, so try memorizing them so you know what's coming. With knowing the hitboxes of attacks and their path, you can also get an understanding of where to position yourself. Some bosses have spots around them where most attacks won't hit you. This is less true for some of Dark Souls 3's bosses, but still true. But be careful, abusing sweet spots can take the fun out of boss fights. If you find a boss too easy, maybe try to challenge yourself and say, I don't use that sweet spot and find a different solution. Challenge is an essential part of Souls fun. Defense is probably the most important part. It has to do with stamina management and often timing. You don't need to block in this game, even though you can. And there are definitely bosses that are much harder to beat using a shield to block attacks. Dodging attacks with iframes is very strong and especially in Dark Souls 3 a lot of bosses are designed around the idea of rolling and iframing attacks. If you fight a boss that is very difficult for you I can recommend to just take a try on a boss without the intention of beating him and just trying to avoid every attack. Don't attack, just think about if you could hit him after you successfully dodged. And suddenly bosses become a lot easier if you have learned patterns and timings until they change, for example due to a new phase. Keep this in mind, 
Some bosses, especially in Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne, have phases that can be very different from their previous phase. You find that far less in the older Souls games, but even there you had bosses that suddenly got some new attacks at some point. Number 11. Some general and some specific hints. It sounds like not much or a bit stupid, but when you hit yourself against a hard boss or section and just die over and over again getting frustrated, just take a break. It sometimes does wonders. Give your brain some time to process what you've learned so far. Always exhaust NPC dialogues. There's a lot to miss if you don't do that. If you play online, you can see bloodstains of other players. Bloodstains show you the deaths of other players and sometimes you can learn a few things out of this. There are also messages from other players that can be very helpful. Sometimes players try to troll other players with their messages, but you find also very helpful messages too. If a message was helpful, rate it. I also recommend to write down helpful messages yourself. You don't have to be in the area for it to be shown to other players. If someone found it helpful and rates it, you get a notification and a small heal. But only in Dark Souls 2 and 3. It's great if you fight a boss and run out of Estus and get healed several times because people rate your message, helping you beating the boss. You can also summon other players or NPCs into your world to help you with the boss. The boss gets more health for each summoned phantom, so keep this in mind too. Also, if you need some souls, maybe put down your own summoning sign and help other players beat their boss. If you don't want to deal with invasions or dislike those online features, you can play offline. In Dark Souls 3 there is a setting for this. In Dark Souls 1, staying undead will also prevent all online interactions except for seeing messages. In 2, being undead will only reduce invades but not fully prevent them. Don't be too afraid of skilling your character wrong. At least in Dark Souls 2 and 3 you can respec your character's attribute points several times per playthrough. Note that you can't change your class's base values. It's not possible in Dark Souls 1 or Bloodborne. Also, parts of the community dislike this feature, but you have to decide yourself if you want to use it or not. If you have cleared an area a lot and just want to travel through it fast, you can often just run through it without fighting. It's sometimes a bit dangerous, but if you know what enemies are there and the exact way you need to go, then usually it's no problem. In Dark Souls 2 also normal enemies stop respawning after you killed them about 15 times. A bonfire ascetic brings them back, but stronger versions of them. If you light a bonfire, it becomes warpable in Dark Souls 3. You don't need to rest there. This is a bit different in other Souls games. In Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3, the entrances for DLCs are relatively easy to find. In Bloodborne it's a bit harder, but in Dark Souls 1 it's almost impossible. So if you don't find it, consider looking it up. Should you plan on playing Dark Souls 1 for PC, consider downloading a small mod that gives you some graphic options and also allows you to unlock the frame rate to 60 FPS. It has also a save backup feature, which can help against a rare bug that can corrupt your save file. The mod is called DSFix. I link it down in the description. And my last hint is a bit advanced. Parries. Parries in Dark Souls can be very strong. You have to time your parry precisely on an enemy attack. Small shields, Thestus, the parry dagger or bare fists are usually the best parry worms. If you parry successfully, you can in most cases do a special attack called Repost that deals massive amounts of damage. This usually only works on normal enemies, but in Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne you will even find several bosses that you can parry. But Dark Souls 1 and 2 also have one boss each that can be parried. But some bosses don't allow a repost. You could say somewhat normal sized humanoids melee attacks can be parried. 
Parry itself is a powerful tool in Souls and there are some annoying enemies that become very easy if you can parry reliably. But keep in mind it's always risky and if you have trouble finding the timing you shouldn't focus on learning it. You can beat the game without it, maybe try backstabbing enemies that helps too. Oh and don't forget, since Dark Souls 2, two handed attacks of bigger weapons can't be parried at all. Well it's a bit more complicated than this but it's about right. I hope those tips will guide you through your adventures in the world of souls. If you like this video consider following me on Twitter for updates or do the YouTube things. Thank you for watching and goodbye.